Praise God. Hallelujah. What's up, Geo family? Praise the Lord for another Tuesday devotional. Pastor Jeff here bringing you today's topic from our series called Experience New Life. And I'm so happy to be with you tonight. And if you missed some of the devotionals we had in the previous weeks or in the past, you know, I encourage you right after this one, you know, just take a moment and look back and watch those previous episodes because I'm sure you're going to be blessed from them. Hallelujah. And I believe today something special because God will bring us, will give us this topic. God has brought us this topic that, that I'm sure will, will give an encouragement to all of us. And there's something about the blood of Jesus. Yes, you heard it right. That's what's going to be our topic for today. It's called the blood of Jesus. Before we start, please join me in a short prayer. Father God, thank you so much for this moment, Lord. Thank you so much for this time that you gather your children once more, Lord, to listen to your word. And I pray, Lord God, as, as we study your word in this short time that we had, I pray, Lord, that it will bring hope, that it will bring encouragement, and that it will bring uh, peace of mind for all of us and comfort, Lord God, and assurance, Lord God, that because of the blood, of your son our lord jesus christ we have been saved lord god hallelujah all glory belongs to you lord god use me as a teacher and let the holy spirit speak through me lord god in jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah the title of our devotional for today it's called the blood of jesus the blood of jesus you know, let me start off by asking you this question if you could buy one thing today, you know, without any consideration for the budget, sky's the limit, what do you think you will get? Or what do you think you will buy? I'm sure you have something in your mind. And if you like to type in, if you want to share your answer, please do so, so that we can have some interaction. And I'd like to thank you for those answers. Amen. If you will ask me what's one thing I want to buy, you know, I want to buy a building or a hotel that's something that that can be used for the glory of God something dump something that can house you know the people of God amen so that's for me if I had the budget hallelujah you know did you know that Jesus also made a purchase an expensive an extravagant purchase he bought something that is so dear to him something that's so precious to him and do you know what was that it's you and me. It's the redemption of humankind. And it's not cheap because it costs him his life. You see, that's the power of the blood of Jesus. You know, according to Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, it says there, For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for the reading of His word. That's the power of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Now, this particular topic, you know, usually we don't talk about it too much. And, and I'm not too sure if you believe about the power of the blood of Jesus. And even those early Christians, you know, actually didn't understand what it was. And, you know, the first time that Jesus spoke the blood of, about the blood of Jesus, they actually been surprised. You know, they thought, are we going to really drink the blood of Jesus? So there's a confusion about there. And that is why, you know, uh, God has given me the privilege to share to you some important lessons about the blood of Jesus. I'm going to actually share to you eight, eight lessons. But tonight, we're going to talk about four of them. And the next four will be next week. So four lessons tonight and four lessons next week. Amen. So here's the first lesson about the blood of Jesus. First one is this. Because of the blood of Jesus, we belong to God. Amen. Because of the blood of Jesus, we belong to God. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 18 explains this very clear. And I'm going to read it to you in 
NLT version. It says there, you know, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Amen. I mean, how wonderful is that? Hallelujah. I mean, I want you to look at that statement once more that says, the empty life you inherited from your ancestor. What does it mean, Pastor? In order for us to understand it, we need to go back to the beginning. I'm sure all of us know about the story about the fall of man, right? You know, the story about Adam, Eve, Eve and the serpent from the book of Genesis. That's the time where man disobeyed God and ate that forbidden fruit. And that's also the start that man fall into sin. And because of that, we all inherited that sin. Amen. Inherited that sin that our ancestor did. We also inherit, you know, the sinful nature. We inherit the empty life from our ancestors. And the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, For the wages of sin is what? Is death. For the wages of sin is death. What does it mean? You know, when people sin, they earn what sin pays. What is that? Which is death. And what First Peter, you know, chapter 1 and verse 18 says to us that, that God paid it all for us. You know, it's very clear. It, is, it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb, of God. God knows we cannot pay for our sins. Amen. Because this, that sin demands death. And God doesn't want us to suffer eternally because of our sins. That's why He bought us. He bought you and me. He ransomed us, not by silver, not by gold, but with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And true that we now belong to God. He bought us. He owns us. We are His and He is ours. Amen. I mean, aren't you thankful for that? Hallelujah. Church, I want you to claim it and believe this. You belong to God. Claim it and believe it. You belong to God. Amen. That's the first lesson. And here's the second lesson. The second lesson is because of the blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Our sins are forgiven. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 says this, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Praise be to God with that God's grace. Hallelujah. You know, there's nothing we can do to pardon or remove our sins. We cannot save our, our own self for the penalty of sin. Have you heard someone who saved himself from his sins? That is why we need a Savior. That's the reason why God did not send an angel, God did not send an engineer or a doctor or a scientist. He sent a Savior because the Savior can save us. And that Savior bled and that Savior died for you and for me. And that's the saving power of the blood of Jesus. Again, in the book of Genesis, you know, in, in chapter 3 and verse 20, God already showed us here a picture of what will Jesus do in the New Testament. This is called the foreshadowing. You know, I want you that I want to read that to you from Genesis chapter 3, verse 20 until verse 21. I'm reading in an ERV version. It says here, Adam name is why Eve he gave her this name because Eve will be the mother of everyone who ever lived and the Lord God used animal skins and made clothes for man and his wife then he put the cloth 
clothes on them. Now here's the question. Where do you think God get the animal skin so that he can make clothes for Adam and Eve? Did he sew it? No, definitely he killed a lamb or he killed an animal. And that animal shed blood and covered them. You see, even in the very beginning of the Bible, you know, where the very first sin was made, God already shed blood in their behalf. God has ordained in the very beginning that, that if, you're, if you're going to be saved, blood has to be shed. There's a cost for sin. And the price of sin is blood. It is not the blood of bulls or the blood of goats, but it is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Church, I want you to claim this and believe this. Because of the blood of Jesus, you are now forgiven by God. Claim it and believe it, brothers and sisters. You are forgiven by God. Hallelujah. Amen. Moving on to the third lesson. Here's the third one. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have been justified. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have been justified. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9 says, Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? Wow. I want you to look at that word justified. Justified. What does it mean actually? If I will explain it in a simple way, you know, it means that you're made right with God. And, and here's my, also my definition of it. Here's what it means. Justified means just as if I'd never sinned. Wow. Just as if I'd never sinned. In other words, you know, God not only forgives our sins, He lets us start over with a clean slate. Just as we've, we've never sinned. Amen. The Bible says God does not keep records of our wrongdoings. Hallelujah. Regardless of how sinful we are in the past, God doesn't remember those things anymore. As if He erased, hallelujah, He erased all of that. We are given a new start, a fresh life, a new life, to, a chance to experience new life in Christ. Just, just, that's what justified means. We have given this, this new start, a fresh start, a clean slate, not because of our good works, not because we are a good person, no, but because of the blood of His Son that was shed for us. Amen. So church, I want you to claim this and believe this. You have been justified by God. Claim it and believe it. You have been justified by God. Hallelujah. And finally for my fourth lesson for today about the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus, we are at peace with God. Amen. Because of the blood of Jesus, we are at peace with God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20 says, And through Him, God was happy to bring all things back to Himself again. Things on earth and things in heaven. God made peace by using the blood sacrifice of His Son on the cross. What a wonderful verse. You know, the greatest warfare going on in the world today is between mankind and God. People may not realize it, that, that they're actually at war with God when they are sinning. But if they don't know, you know, if they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, and if they haven't surrendered their life to Him, God considered them to be at war with Him. And why is that? Because this is what sin does to us. It made us rebel to God. It made us disobey God. It made us to turn away from God. That's what sin does to us. 
God hates sin, but He doesn't hate people. He loves the people. He loves His creation. Do you have proof with that, Pastor? Yes. Look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. What does it say there? It says there, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even when we are still sinners, God already offered His Son to die for you and for me. He didn't wait for us to be perfect. He didn't wait us for us you know, to, to be cleansed. Uh, from our sins? No. In our own sins, He already offered His Son to die for you and for me. This verse is, is telling us that through the blood of Jesus, He initiates it. You know, God made a way for us to have peace with Him. We didn't, we didn't start it. We didn't you know, initiate to have peace with God. God did it first. Amen. Because God loves us first. I want you to remember this. Peace can be experienced only when we receive divine pardon. Peace can be experienced only when we receive divine pardon. When we have been reconciled with God, we will have harmony within we will have harmony with our fellow believers, fellow men, and especially we're going to have harmony with God. And the Bible says, if we continue on with our sins, you know, if we reject this, this offer of salvation, if we reject God, this is what's going to happen. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 21 says, There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. This is true, right? I mean, a person without Jesus in his life, there's no peace within. Amen? Right? There's always worry, there's fear, there's doubt, there's struggle within. There's no peace. And there's, there's no peace among fellow men either. Right? Why? Because there's always anger, there's always hatred, there's violence, there's strife in the hearts. The heart is corrupt by sin. Isn't it? But listen to this. Through the shedding of the blood on that cross, Christ made peace with God for us. And He Himself is our peace. Amen. You see, God made a peace offering by offering to us the Prince of Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. So church, I want you to claim it and believe this. You know, God is not angry with you. God is not angry with you. And I hope you, you know, we will not continue on in our sin. This is for our own sake. That's why God is giving us a warning. Otherwise, we're waging war with God. A war that we cannot win. Amen. So I want you to claim it and believe this. Because of the blood of Jesus, you have now peace with God. You have now peace with God. Amen. Well, that brings me to the end of my devotion for today. And let us close our time together in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord God, for the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross. We may not have you know, a deep understanding about it. We may not have, uh, uh, we have, may not have thought about it before in the past, but Lord, right now, thank you for your word that, that it sheds a light to us and give us understanding the value, the benefit, and the power of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for all of us. Thank you, Lord God, for the forgiveness Thank you, Lord God, for the justification. And Lord God, thank you, Lord, for the redemption. And thank you, Lord, for the peace that you made available for us because of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to declare this to all of you, brothers and sisters, watching right now. I pray that, that you will have an understanding about the forgiveness, understanding about the justification, understanding about the redemption, and understanding about the peace of God in your life.
through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let the Holy Spirit give you wisdom and comfort and understanding and encouragement in knowing the value and the benefit of the blood of our Savior. This is my prayer. This is our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to be with you once more on the part two of our topic about the blood of Jesus happening next Tuesday here at Grace Unlimited Church Online. And make sure that you like us and follow us on all social media platforms. The link is showing on your screen. And I would really appreciate if you will share this message. If you will share this devotional to someone that's, that, that needs to understand the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. So see you soon, guys. And stay, stay safe. God bless you all. Shalom. Hallelujah.